Welcome to the first video for this course of the lecture series. We will uh, break the chapter one lectures into four lectures. Each one we hope will be less than 10 minutes long. So some of the topics include what is a program, what's a computer system, what's the nature of hardware, you're going to learn basic uh, technology, tech, um, terminology. We're going to look at programming, programming languages, what are the parts of a program, what elements make a program. We're going to look at a, a traditional model of a program as a mechanism that takes inputs, processes the inputs, and produces results or outputs from that. That's called the IPO view of a program. Finally, we will talk about how do you go about programming. What's a computer? A computer is a machine that can follow instructions. Uh, as you advance in your studies of computers, you will understand that computers are quite dumb, but they're extremely fast. So it's up to a person to cause the computer to do its operations in an organized way to produce the result that you want. The instructions that you would give to a computer to execute is called a program. And for a program to execute, it must be in the memory of the computer. And the programmer, that's you, is a person who writes instructions or writes programs. Without programs, Programmers, there's no programs without programs. Computers are just hardware. What's a computer system? Well, let's begin with the hardware. You've probably heard this before, but the hardware consists primarily of three parts, four, five parts. First part is the central processing unit, which we can call the brains of the computer. The next part is the main memory, which is the random access memory, or RAM. And for a program to execute again, it must reside in the RAM. Then computers come with secondary storage devices. The primary one is, of course, the hard drive. Then there are input devices and output devices. These devices do not store data. They merely transfer data from inside the program or computer to, in, to outside of the program. So here's a picture of the main hardware components. The central processing unit contains basically two parts. One part is called the arithmetic and logic unit, and this is basically has the ability to do uh, basic arithmetic. And the basic um, arithmetic, surprisingly, uh, consists of a very few operations that are used. The control unit is responsible for coordinating the steps that the computer takes to execute instructions. And the control unit follows this simple um, re repetitive process called get an instruction, decode the instruction, which means understand what the instruction is supposed to do. The computer has to distinguish an add instruction from a multiply instruction because the sequence of elementary steps required to carry out the instruction is different for addition than it is for multiplication. And finally, the control unit is responsible for triggering the execution of a computer instruction. The main memory holds both data and instructions. The main memory is kind of tricky because unlike the hard drive, which retains its values, its data, even when you turn the power off, the main memory is, has a volatile memory, which means that it goes away when you turn, turn off the computer. Uh, the memory of a computer is really divided into very, very small information units, the smallest of which is called a bit, a binary digit. And each bit is either a zero or a one. Bits by themselves are not uh, interesting. Uh, collections of bits are. Eight bits is referred to as a byte, and that's the amount of bits required to represent a character on your keyboard. A computer word is typically either four bytes or eight bytes. In early computers, a computer word could have been as small as eight bytes. Uh, in the 70s, 
16-bit computers uh, were involved. Uh, in the 80s and 90s, 32-bit um, and the 2064-bits are the contemporary word size in a computer. <clears throat> Secondary storage is non-volatile. If you turn the power off, the data is still there. And we have a, a large variety of these devices. Input devices merely transmit information from the outside to the ends to the computer. And the, the typical devices, the keyboard is the standard input device. A mouse, microphone, scanner, and these other technologies also can provide input. Output devices, typically um, the, the uh, standard output device is the computer screen or also it's called a monitor. And other um, output devices include printers, speakers, disk drives, uh, etc. Okay. I need to make a note here. A USB flash drive is really not an output device. It's a um, secondary storage device because it holds data. And the data on the flash drive is organized the same way as the data on the um, uh, RAM. Okay, this is the end of the first.